So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, session two here at Green Week 2007. Thank you very much for all coming uh, and being on time and I uh, hope you didn't have too good a lunch because this is going to be quite a rigorous session. As we reflect on the environment lessons learned in the past 50 years and look ahead to the next 50, uh, there is one dominant subject and it is climate change. As uh, President Barroso said this morning, it is the greatest challenge we face today. And the EU has con continued to take the lead in this important subject. I'm Rick Thompson. I worked for many years at the BBC, uh, looking after international news coverage. When I started as a journalist 35 years ago, climate change simply wasn't a subject. In fact, the environment wasn't much of a subject. Uh, now it is the one subject grabbing the attention of the listeners to the BBC World Service around the world, viewers of BBC World, or people who send messages to the website. It embraces the entire world. Everybody wants to know. How serious is this crisis, and what can be done about it? Well, we have three top experts here for you this afternoon, some of the people who know more about this subject than anybody else on the planet. Uh, they are leading members of the IPCC. Now, I'm aware there are a lot of experts here who understand all this. I am not an expert, and I think there are some people here who may just need a little bit of a reminder about what we're talking about. The, um, the IPCC was set up by the UN. It has issued a series of assessment reports as climate change came up over the horizon. Uh, the work of hundreds, nay, thousands of scientists. I think um, Stefan Ramsdorf told me there's two and a half thousand scientists' work distilled into these assessment reports. The first in 1990, the fourth, and the most interesting, earlier this year. So what are these assessment reports? Where do they come from? Well, they divided the work up into these working groups. Working group one, was all about the science, the science facts, the basis, what is happening, why is it happening. The second working group was basically about the impacts, adaptation, also vulnerabilities, what's going to happen. And uh, the third working group obviously carries it on to mitigation, what can we do about it, how does this feed into policy actions which can actually have some very urgent impact. So these are the working groups you've seen referred to. The fourth assessment report that came out earlier this year, well, it was very complex. Um, as a journalist, I just pick out three little headlines um, that it clearly said global warming is definitely happening. Uh, it said there was a 90% certainty that humans are the major cause with CO2 emissions, and it said that by 2100, the end of this century, temperature could, could, temperatures could rise between an absolute minimum of 1.1 degrees centigrade and possibly as much as 6.4, though I'm told that that 1.1 figure is already out of date and we're into a two figure as a minimum already, the figure that the EU is trying to uh, see as its target to hold that figure by various actions. Uh, and of course, this was a, a sign scientific report. We've got huge news coverage. I don't think there's ever been a science report that's had so much coverage. And here's just one front page from one newspaper where I come from, the UK, which called it a final warning. And it has the scenarios underneath. I don't know whether you can see it on the screen, but uh, if the uh, worst case scenario of a rise of 6.4 degrees uh, uh, comes to pass, the, the independent newspaper cheerfully tells us that most of life is exterminated. So, um, well, do we believe it? We journalists um, have a terrible reputation of getting things wrong, and um, there's a famous instruction from the editor of The Economist to his staff, if you want to be a successful journalist, simplify and then exaggerate. And uh, maybe we do. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And I do think there's evidence that newspaper readers, listeners to the radio, viewers of television, aren't quite sure whether to believe this or not. Um, I mean, can we really believe that half the species on the planet are going to be exterminated in the lifetime of my grandchildren? Um, and there's cynicism, a growing distrust of politicians, also distrust of experts, 
It was experts who told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. It was experts who told us we're all going to die of SARS. It was experts who told us that bird flu is going to kill us all. I mean, um, do we really believe them? There's confusion. There have been a number of different reports, different interpretations. Scientists, particularly in the United States, have said they don't actually think it's true. There is, of course, an element of fatalism that people will say, just by recycling my bottles, it's not going to make any difference. And in Europe, of course, we have this issue of, well, what can we do if the United States, China, and other major countries aren't engaged? So I think there's still some, some conviction to be, to be done, and I think there's still some confusion about the real facts.